Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hard Acre Farm. Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park West. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday afternoon. We have 10 races coming up, carryovers in the Super High Five, Late Pick Five, and the Rainbow Six. Should be a great day. Let's check out the track and weather conditions. The main track is fast and the turf course is listed as good today at Gulfstream Park West. Temperatures are in the high 80s. Race number one is a maiden claiming for the two-year-old Phillies. We have six going to post. Racing at Gulfstream West. From between horses, Jess Peachy Keen bounces out to take the lead. Taryn Kara Diamond has speed, and here's a Maranathus from down toward the inside. So two first-timers are quickest out of there, Jess Peachy Keen and a Maranathus. They set up Ten Kara Diamond in third, followed fourth by my niece, Luann. Her outside goes Mary Elena, and two to the trailer, Fast Point. They pass the half mile and move to the far turn. Jess Peachy Keen and Louis Castillo call the shots with a two-length lead. Amaranath is second on the outside. Mary Elena now moves into second. My niece Luann splits horses. She's third. Back to fourth. Ten Carat Diamond needs to pick it up. And Fast Point is last of all as they round the far turn. They go to the 5 16th, and here comes Mary Elena on the outside and from between horses. My niece Luann. They work ahead of Jess Peachy Keen. Ten Carat Diamond has been soundly defeated with a quarter of a mile left to go. Tussle still up top. Montalvo on the outside toward the inside. Sebastian Saez. My niece Luann has the inside edge. Mary Elena on the outside is second. Four lengths back to just Peachy Keen and a late run from Fast Point. Less than an eighth of a mile to go. My niece Luann surviving. Now leads it by two and a half. Mary Elena tried her but is second best to a debut winner. My niece Luann. She won it by two and a half. Mary Elena was second. Fast Point was third. Ten carat diamond gallops up to be fourth. A mild upset in the opener, the number five, a first-time starter, my niece Luann gets it done under jockey Sebastian Saez, trained by Angel Rodriguez and owned by Frank Calabrese. Race number two is seven and a half furlongs on the turf, a claiming race for three-year-olds and upward, which have never won two races. Scratch the number one, Siorno. And they're off. Hope is rising a step slow. Good start for Tide of the Desert. Forever Die down toward the inside. Diamond Square has some speed. And here's Bodie Dog moving on the far outside. Bodie Dog's going to try to get the lead and cross over doing it, followed by On Cruise Control, who's mid flight. Then it's Lil Charlie and Traffic Express. And the early trailer is Hope is Rising. Around the first turn and loose up top, Bodie Dog leads by two. Second is Tide of the Desert, third is Diamond Square. From fourth and inside, Forever Die, working ahead in front of a three wide on cruise control. Two back to Traffic Express ahead of Lil Charlie, and Hope is rising as last. Down the back stretch they go. No change in the plot. Up front, Bodie Dog, three parts of a length. Tide of the Desert is a bit closer second. Diamond Square is now third. Forever Die is fourth. Three wide and fifth is on cruise control. And the three at the back are Hope is Rising, Lil Charlie, and Traffic Express. They swing around the far turn in the second of the day. And up front, Bodie Dog continues to lead. Tide of the Desert is a bit closer second on cruise control. Has made it up third alongside Diamond Square. That's all for Forever Die. Retreating now about five or six lengths off the lead. Passed by Lil Charlie and from between horses Traffic Express. Still at the back of the field as Hope is rising and they converge on Bodie Dog. Bodie Dog has the lead on the outside Diamond Square from between horses on cruise control. Yet to be asked for his best on cruise control under very minimal handling. Leads now by a length and a quarter. Diamond Square is second then back to Tide of the Desert. But you can't win a horse race any easier than this. It will be on cruise control. Indeed. On cruise control won it by three. Diamond Square second, Tide of the Desert third, then Bodie Dog and Traffic Express. The number seven on cruise control makes it a daily double for winning owner Frank Calabrese. This one ridden by Tyler Gaffleone and trained by Rashawn Creaky. At even money, paid $4 to win. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more racing in just a moment. We have to take care of these horses that, you know, give us some of its joy. Being accredited by the TAA gives us instant credibility. People trust us even more than they have before because they know that the TAA has been to all of our location and that our horses are well cared for. I mean, this farm wouldn't look the way it is. These horses wouldn't look the way they are if it wasn't for the generosity and the hard work of Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance. They've united our whole industry in terms of the aftercare movement. We're all working together for the same purpose. 
Race number three is a maiden claiming for the two-year-old fillies. Scratch the number 240 knots. They go six furlongs on the main track. And they're off. Blasting away from the inside was Tony Ann's Miracle. Meanwhile, the other favorite storybook ending walked out of the gate and is 10 lengths last. So down the back stretch they go, and Tony Ann's Miracle controls the pace and her own destiny at the five furlong point, leading Hot Francesca a length and a quarter. Bella Star is third, fourth is Morning Grace, and now it's only seven to Storybook Ending, who starts to figure out what to do. She's playing catch up at the back of the field with less than half a mile to go. Tony Ann's Miracle on top here for Edgar Zayas by three lengths. Hot Francesca now inches a closer second. Bella Star is third. She's in range for Montalvo, two and a half lengths clear of Morning Grace, and five to Storybook storybook ending. Around the far turn they go. There's less than five sixteenths to travel. Tony Ann's Miracle bumps the margin to four again. All in second hot Francesca running on Bella Star third, but at the top of the stretch, Tony Ann's Miracle has this to throw away. Hot Francesca just ducks sharply to the outside, eliminating her momentum, but inside the final furlong, Tony Ann's Miracle has no dangers. Edgar Zayas and Tony Ann's Miracle. He hasn't got into second gear yet, and he won't need to. It's Tony Ann's Miracle putting down the knee and running out the clock. A Wrapped up winner by nine or ten. Second was Bella Star. Third was Morning Grace. And storybook ending crosses the wire fourth. The number one, Tony Ann's Miracle, did it easily going away in her fourth start. Paid $3.40 to win. Ridden to victory by Edgar Zayas. Trained by Larry Pilati and owned by Monarch Stables. Race number four is five furlongs on the turf, a claiming race for three-year-olds and upward. Scratch the main track only is number eight, Little Meatball, and number nine, Coxon. Remigate. And they're off. Picture perfect beginning. From between horses, Swagger begins the best. Some roar is being sent along. Texas Rustler finds his feet on the outside. In between horses, it's Polly Graham working two better than Bill's Passion. He's off the pace and three clear of Biggest Little City. Keep Me Grounded is last of all with less than half a mile to go. Carlos Olivero and Swagger into the far turn with the lead by a length. Polly Graham very much in range second. Texas Rustler's a joint third down on the inside and racing from fourth. That's some roar. Two back to Bill's Passion, then Biggest Little City and Keep Me Grounded. Past the 5 16ths, and there's less now than a quarter of a mile to go. Swagger maintains control, but Polly Graham won't go away on the outside. Texas Rustler swings to the center, and with an eighth of a mile left, it's still Swagger on top. Polly Graham going to take another run at him. Texas Rustler and Biggest Little City charging hard. In deep stretch, Swagger still has the lead. Up into second, some roar. Swagger is clear. Two in a row for Swagger. Second was some roar, and third was Polly Graham, then Texas Rustler and Biggest Little City. The number four, Swagger, went to the lead and never looked back in the fourth race. Paid $10.40 to win, ridden by Carlos Olivero, trained by Antonio Chaffee, and owned by Just For Fun Stable. Race number five is five and a half furlongs on the main track. A maiden special weight for the state bred two-year-olds. We have a big favorite and a first-time starter from Todd Fletcher in the number six, Elka Camp. And they're off. From the inside, our secret life blasts away to try to get a clear advantage. Moving with him is Salambo in the early stages. Two lengths clear of Toss, who's going to get a great setup behind the speed third. Because Toss is open five on the next two, which are Muckrack and Gone Fishing. Then down inside, it's Bolt Carrier and Elk Camp. The favorite is last a long way, more than a dozen behind as they swing to the far turn. Our secret life and Luis Castillo, hard sent, but have inside position and a narrow lead. Salambo is in second. Toss is getting a beautiful trip third. Back to fourth is Bolt Carrier. He's ran on a bit. He's within seven lengths of the lead. Then it's a gap of five to the other two. Gone fishing Muck Creek and Elk Camp is still far back as they run to the top of the stretch. Our secret life has been overhauled now by Salambo. Uh, Salambo on the outside now takes the lead. On the outside in our secret life to tip off the fence for a re-rally second. It's a gap of four to Bolt Carrier third, then toss fourth. Final furlong. Salambo in front. Our secret life second. There's just no dangers to Salambo and Carlos Olivero. Olivero goes back to back. Salambo wins, wrapped up by three. Our secret life second, gone fishing third, then toss. Running on well late was Elk Camp. He'll gallop out strong in today's fifth. And the number four, Salambo, gets it done in the fifth race. The favorite was a no-show, but this one was ridden for Carlos Olivero. That's two wins today for him. 
trained by Rodolfo Garcia and owned by Tanner and Stable, paid $6.40 to win. Let's take a break. We'll be back in just a few moments. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded in 1999 by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, now based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm, from the breeding shed to the racetrack, in pursuit of producing the best. Race number six is seven and a half furlongs on the turf, a claiming race for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, which have never won two races. Scratch one, four, seven, eight, and 13. And they're off. Toward the inside, the blonde begins nicely. Don't talk back was away in good shape and reaches out to take the lead. Our run to perfection on the stretch out has speed. And Easter Act is not far away. Then back to Pops Irish Rose on the outside and Miss B on Deddy Ray. The blonde is at the rail. And then it's a gap of another three to call me justified. As they round the first turn, the trailer is Taco Wayne shot. Up front, our run to perfection and jockey Evaldo Santana have now cleared the field and they lead by two over Don't Talk Back, who's on a long reign second. Easter Act is now third. Pops Irish Rose works between horses and takes over fourth. Followed inside by Call Me Justified. Then it's the blonde and Miss B and Deddy Ray. And two back to Taco Wayne's shot. Down the back stretch they go. Our run to perfection, allowed to do things her own way. She goes to the final half mile in front a length and a quarter. On the outside, Don't Talk Back is a bit closer. Second, third, and pocketed up. Easter Act from fourth and on the outside pops Irish Rose. Then down at the fence goes Call Me Justified, racing ahead of Miss B on Deddy Ray. Taco Wayne shot on the blonde as they round the far turn. Our run to perfection with only a head in front. Don't Talk Back now issues her challenge on the outside and out the quarter pole. Don't Talk Back puts a head in front. Still has a lot of work to do, though. Pops Irish Rose moves with her on the outside, and they're at the top of the stretch. Don't Talk Back has the lead. Pops Irish Rose set down for the drive, and Miss Biondetti Ray's on the outside, but inside the funnel for long. Pops Irish Rose has one to fight off. Miss Biondetti Ray on the outside coming after her. Inside the 16th pole and to the finish, Pops Irish Rose. Whoa, what a second is Miss Biondetti Ray. Third is Don't Talk Back, and fourth our run to perfection. Number six, Pops Irish Rose gets the win for jockey Sebastian Sayas, trained by Chuck Simon and owned by Sunshine Thoroughbred Corp. Paid $6.20 to win. Seventh race today is seven furlongs on the main track, a claiming race for three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races or three-year-olds. Seven are heading to the starting gate. And they're off. From the outside, switched was away well in the blue colors and reaches out to challenge for the lead with Lil's Fast Boy displaying speed and Dreamy Martini now marches between horses. So out of the shoot, Dreamy Martini leads narrowly. Toward the inside, here's Fueled by Drama to take up the slack and now Fueled by Drama, Drama runs off and leads it two and a half. Dreamy Martini, Kinani, second and third, switched had to tap on the brakes. Lil's Fast Boy's at the rail, then Gatsby Tavern and I have the lion as last as Abby Medina and Fueled by Drama go to the half mile pole leading by two. Two and a half. A wall of pursuers. They include Kinane on the inside, Lil's Fast Boy. From between them, Dreamy Martini. Then it's a length and a half back to Gadsby Tavern alongside Switched and still trailing as Eye of the Lion. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn, fueled by Drama at the three furlong point with a length to work with. In tandem, second and third is Lil's Fast Boy and Kinane. Two and a half to switch. He just ran by Dreamy Martini. Eye of the Lion is underway, and at the back of the field is the favorite Gadsby Tavern with a quarter of a mile left to go. Fueled by Drama, tackled by Lil's Fast Boy. Lil's Fast Boy comes off the turn as the one to beat opens a three length lead. Kinane second, switch third, down the outside. It's Eye of the Lion with the late say. Final eighth of a mile, Lil's Fast Boy trying to gut it out. On the outside, Kinane takes another run at him. Eye of the Lion is third. Now Kinane overhauls Lil's Fast Boy, and Kinane moves away to win it. Lil's Fast Boy in a photo for second with Eye of the Lion. Gatsby Tavern ran on fourth. The number six, Kinane, comes running for trainer Tammy Levy, ridden by Tyler Gaffleone for two wins today, and this one owned by IAB Stables and Walter Freilich. Paid $6.80 to win. Race number eight is a mile and a 16th on the turf, a claiming race for three-year-olds and upward, which have never won three races or three-year-olds. Scratch the nine, Little Shade, the 
12, proud enough, and the 13, clearly a demon. And they're off. Level beginning. Giants voice and Colton Zahner get the first two calls. Moving up on the outside, mass approval displaying some speed. Brown's gap's going to tuck into a nice spot. He'll land third as they run out of the chute and link up with the main course. On the inside, Colton Zahner to the outside and Giants voice. Two and a half in front of a well-situated Brown's gap third. From fourth, it's Albert Charles. Contramar is at the rail fifth for Edgar Zayas. Then outside and all's well. True diplomacy works between horses and is about six lengths off the lead, racing ahead of mass approval. On the outside in Gannett, and Burning Wild is at the back of the field as they round the first turn. Colton's honor on the inside leads by a head. Right back at him as Giants voice from second. Brown's gap third. Racing from fourth, it's Albert Charles. Bending into the backstretch fifth is Contamar alongside all as well. True Diplomacy and Ganesh out wide, then back to Burning Wild and trailing his mass approval. They make their way down the backstretch and go to the final half mile of the contest. And the tussle continues here between Giants voice and Colton's honor. They're in lockstep with less than half a mile to go, racing ahead of Brown's Gap. From the outside, and Albert Charles from between horses. That's uh, trying to run on a bit now is the favorite, Contamar. He's down toward the inside. He's got some traffic to negotiate as Giants Voice goes on the offensive. Around the far turn, Giants Voice bumps the margin to four now. Brown's Gap is there, second, winding it up, burning wild. Contamar's in a wall of traffic now as they swing in. Still many chances with Giants Voice, the one to reel in. Giants Voice at the furlong grounds, leads by three. Far outside, burning wild's on a roll. Here's burning wild and Roberto Alvarado Jr. shifting ground. Contamar, Albert Charles still right there. Giants Voice, burning wild's gonna take a late push. He's out of time. It's Giants Voice hanging on. Burning wild was second, Albert Charles finished third. The number four Giants voice showed that speed and got the win today under jockey Oscar Yoa Perez, owned and trained by Angel Kiros, while the seven Burning Wild settled for second once again. Paid $29.60 to win. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, it'll be time for the late double. Crossing the finish line for the last time can mean an uncertain future for many horses. Recognizing the need for a dignified retirement, the racing industry has made racehorse aftercare a top priority. In partnership with Gulfstream Park and the Florida Horsemen's Association, Florida Track provides retraining and adoption services for retired racehorses. Thanks to their efforts, the end of a racing career can signal the beginning of a new career. In show jumping, trail riding, police work, even therapy for children and veterans. However, good intentions do not come without cost. As a nonprofit organization, Florida Track relies on tax-deductible donations and volunteers to help pay for feed, training, housing, and veterinary care. To find out how you can help, contact Florida Track today. Your support will go a long way towards a new beginning. The ninth race today is one mile on the main track, a claiming race for three-year-olds and upward. Just one scratch in here, take out the 10, better man. And they're off. In my father's image, just a step slow. The favorite Ender's Cat blasts away from the gate and takes a clear advantage in the run to the first turn from Panamax, who moves up on his outside to take over second. Down inside, it's Banco De Niro, who's now third, a length and a half better than Angel C. And it's co-captain moving out the rail. That's in my father's image. Out three wide cookies are good ahead of life's reward. And turncoat is last. They leave the turn and straighten out for their journey up the backstretch. It's the classy Ender's Cat in front, three parts of a length over Panamax in second. Racing in third is Banco De Niro, a length in front of Angel C fourth. Two and a half lengths back to Cookies Are Good, followed by inside running co-captain. Life reward is next ahead of in my father's image. And trailing the field is turncoat. 
as they race down the back stretch and go to the half mile pole. Ender's Cat and Jose Alvarez pressed along by Panamax. Angel C, three wide for Raul Mena, racing ahead of Banco De Niro. He needs a little racing room, but he appears to have horse. He's only two lengths off the lead. Then back to the gray, Lice Reward, who starts to hit his best stride, racing ahead of Turncoat. Both get around cookies are good. Then in my father's image, and co captain calls it an afternoon as they try to track down Ender's Cat. Ender's Cat to the top of the stretch, leads only narrowly. Moving up on the outside is Ender, or, uh, Angel C trying to run on Life Reward the Gray. And then in between horses, a late run from Turncoat. They're at the top of the stretch. With the lead, Ender's Caddy cuts the corner and maintains control. Banco De Niro shifting ground, trying to get after him second. Down the outside and Life Reward. They're all swarming in, but they have yet to get to Ender's Cat. Ender's Cat is still there. The battle's on for the Miners, and it'll be a good battle too, but Ender's Cat is the winner. On the drop in class, he wins it by four. Life Reward's going to get second ahead of Banco De Niro third. And the big favorite, the number four Ender's Cat, gets it done in race number nine on the big class drop. Right into victory by Jose Alvarez, trained by Aubrey Mirage, and owned by Auricchio and Jacobson, LLC. Tenth and final race today is the maiden claiming seven and a half furlongs on the turf. It's for the three-year-olds and up. Ten will go to post. And runners away. From the center, Mr. Borax was away very well, and he's reaching out to take the year of lead from Family Justice, who has speed. German Alberto down toward the rail, and up on the outside, it's Whale and Sail. Could be he's going to be sent very wide to that first turn. Could be he's about 10 wide, and I'm not joking, as they round the first turn. Mr. Borax has the lead by a length. Moving to second is Family Justice, and on the outside, here's the turf debut runner, Major Hit. So Major Hit strides into second behind Mr. Borax. And back at the inside, it's German Alberto. Could be, has now made it up to be fourth. And he's dropped over to the three path. GT's Grammy's on his outside. Then back to Whale and Sail at the fence looking over us. And Padre is at the back of the field as they race down the backstretch. Up front, the leader, Mr. Borax, in front by a neck. Up on the outside, could be, is three wide in between horses. It's major hit. These three across the course, working ahead of Family Justice. Now improving between horses is Nation USA. GT's Grammys on the outside. German Alberto has lost some ground. Racing ahead of a retreating looking over us with Whale and Sail as they round the far turn. Mr. Borax has been sharp so far, and he leads three parts of a length. Could be still there. Second Nation USA has made it up to third. German Alberto in the white cap swings to the center, and they're at the top of the stretch. Mr. Borax has to kick for more, and he has the lead toward the inside Family justice german alberto unleashed down the outside with could be inside the final 16th here's german alberto getting to mr borax in between them could be family justice at the rail this is going to get close here's the line could be could be he did and he was very wide on that turn he overcame that trouble to win it over german alberto and it was the first time starter the number 10 could be after a wide trip won the nightcap under sammy camacho Trained by David Fox and owned by David Fox and Donald Roberts, paid $9.20 to win. In the late pick five, four of five paid $8.65, but five of five paid $839. Super high five paid out, combination 10, 2, 7, 5, 1. That was $4,180.10. In the pick six, six of six paid $2,409.88. There's a carryover into Monday's card of $19,783.56. And that wraps up today. Don't forget, we have a special racing day on Monday on Columbus Day, so we will see you tomorrow. Ten more races coming up, and our first post is 1.15 p.m. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. 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 Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.